Charlie. Great to see you, mate. Yeah, look, when you asked me to have coffee, I thought I'd actually get a coffee. <laughs> and this is an empty coffee, Charlie people. This is not, this is fake coffee, yeah. people. Okay, where's Charlie Aitken come from? You know, people have watched you on our website, on my TV show, they've, they've read you in newspapers. But where does the real Charlie Aitken come from? Well, I was born in the tough streets of Vaucluse. <laughs> Dad was the chief executive of Perpetual yeah. and, and started the Perpetual Industrial Share Fund, which is one of the, the best, best, best performing funds in yeah. Australian history. Yeah. But look, it's like being a doctor's son. I mean, when you work, in, work for a father who's a fund manager, you can't help but sort of be interested in markets. Yeah. And Dad, Dad was very good at encouraging us to learn about shares and finance and just basic economics. Do you talk about stocks at the dinner table? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Mum did too, but mum was... Yeah, mum was a bit of an investor as well, wasn't Mum she? was the best investor in the family. Mum was a tremendous personal investor who just bought stocks that she liked. So her portfolio when she passed away sort of five or six years ago was just pristine, fantastic portfolio. Mm. You started off in stockbroking. That's when I first came across you. Southern Cross. Well, actually, go back a step. Water, My it? first job was actually on the futures floor, the old Sydney Futures Exchange okay. futures floor. Well, My Hoskins, job was to pick. Yeah, he was the boss to mm. pick up the receipts from the traders off the floor. Well, what you got? I guess went to Sydney University or Grand for Gold. a little while. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the futures floor was a fantastic place to learn anything. It taught you supply and demand. It taught you emotion. Mm. It taught you how stop losses work. And it was a physical, the single best way of learning how markets work. Yeah. It was fantastic. Mm. And then from there I became a stockbroker and then started writing strategy notes. So now you have your own fund, so why don't you tell people about that? Well, I always wanted, you know, I thought the natural transition from stockbroking was eventually looking after money, physically you know, having your own fund, being a fund manager, or as my daughter says, a fund manager, <laughs> which, which some days it is, some days it isn't, trust me on that. But um, I always wanted a fund that could, you know, get the best of Australia and the best of the rest of the world and put it in a fund and see how we went. So did your wife... Ellie hates you. I know there's plenty of reasons why she might hate you occasionally. But when you thought it was a good idea to sell your house for a lot of money to put it in the fund, how did you convince Ellie of the great idea? Well, I'm not 100% sure I have yet. <laughs> <laughs> she understood that, you know, to take a risk, you wanted no mortgage debt, you wanted no debt in the business. She was very good about it. Like, it's not perfect selling your family home to have a crack at building a business, but in hindsight, it was a great decision. But to do things properly in small business, I think you need to be undistracted by servicing debt or anything like that. Mm. So Ellie's been great, she's brought a lot to the business and you know, obviously supports me through thick or thin. Yeah. And, but look, to us that was a good decision because I don't think we would have made the right decisions about the business with, you know, with mortgages and things like that. One final question, um, in your early days in the fund you were a big supporter of Facebook and that it was a good investment for you. Um, are you glad you're out of it now? Well, look, we probably prematurely sold US tech stocks about six, nine months ago, thinking that there was, they'd had enough, and they've got obviously continued. Look, I just, it just got to the point for me where everyone owned everything in America and the big large cap tech stocks. They were getting a bit expensive, and I thought there was regulatory risk. I thought eventually they'd face regulatory risk in terms of tariffs or whatever, or payback tariffs from the EU. They're almost like too big for their own good at the moment, mm. and they have powers that are beyond most governments. Yeah. So look, we've rotated to Chinese tech. We, we think things like Tencent, JD.com, Alibaba are far more interesting right here, right now than, mm. than American tech. We're not non-believers in tech. We think the future is very you know, smartphone driven, data driven, mm. Every, everything consumer is just completely you know, going to be using internet based you know, um, businesses quite frankly. And uh, so we're not deniers of tech, we just think there's better value in Chinese tech at the moment. But look, I mean, if Facebook got smashed for some reason, I'd be tempted to buy it. Mm. But it's not on its first down day in, in a long time. Okay, well, when you buy Facebook again, make sure you tell us first. Oh, well, obviously, <laughs> Okay, right. Well, thanks for having a cup of coffee with us, and I'll make sure you have a real coffee as soon as this camera stops rolling. Thanks, thanks for joining us.